Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and what we have with us today is the Google Pixel 3 smartphone. Google has announced the launch of the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL and both the phones will be available in India starting November for a starting price of 71,000 rupees for the Pixel 3 and both the phones are available in only two storage options, uh, either 64 GB or 128 GB variants and of course there is no expandable storage and it is a bummer that there is no dual SIM option either considering now even the iPhones have jumped on the dual dual SIM bandwagon. So is the Google Pixel 3 uh, worth your hard earned money? Well, in this review, we're about to find out. Now, kicking things off with the build and design of the phone, if you look at it, it has the similar dual tone back. Of course, it's available in three colors. This is the not pink color, but it's actually a little pink. It looks light pink, right? Well, it is available in three colors, not pink, not pink, clearly white and just black. And we, of course, opted to choose uh, the not pink color for review. Now, a very clear thing about the back, apart from the fact that it looks like the Pixel 2 when it comes to the dual tone, is that the glass is really soft. It doesn't feel fragile as glass. And if you knock on it for the first time, and if you did not know that it is a glass back, you would be okay to mistake it for a polycarbonate back. However, this is glass it has a similar finish that we have seen on say the white one plus six when it came out it has this smooth textured finish if you touch the back of this phone and the back of an iphone this will somehow feel a little more stronger and a little more softer at the same time and of course the top third as you can see still has the uh, traditional glossy glass finish of course the bottom is not prone to fingerprint uh, fingerprint uh, magnet it isn't a fingerprint magnet if you look at it so that is a pretty good thing up front you have a five and a half inch uh, display and voila there is no notch. I'm actually one who is completely against having a notch on a smartphone, and I'm really happy that Google went with a no notch design for the younger sibling. Of course, the Pixel 3 XL has a god awful ugly notch, but this one does not. Uh, however, you will notice it has a chin and a forehead at the top, and of course, the top houses uh, the earpiece along with a dual camera setup to eight megapixel cameras, the earpiece, which also doubles up as a secondary uh, speaker, and the bottom chin has a speaker as well. So you do get two front facing speakers for a stereo effect. Now, the speakers out here are really, really loud they get in your face with all the sound however when you play content at really high volumes one of the problems is that the phone actually begins to vibrate in your hands and that might not be good for everyone but commenting on the quality of the speakers they are really loud they are pretty good and if you are sitting in a fairly noisy cafe and huddling around a few people huddling around this phone to watch a nice movie trailer you will enjoy it speaking of movie trailers let's talk about the display next what we have here is a full hd plus uh, 1080p display it's a P OLED display, so naturally you're going to get fantastic looking blacks. It has it has one of the best displays that we have seen on a premium flagship smartphone, whether you're going to watch content of new YouTube, of Netflix, of Prime videos, or you're just simply going to put a nice fancy wallpaper like this to enjoy it. The display is absolutely immersive. I would go as far as to calling it a window into the content that you are watching. Even under bright sunlight, you can navigate the display really easily for everyday use, but however, if you're going to watch videos that are in the dark, uh, in outdoor sunlight, that may be a bit of a problem. Now, one thing which some of you that have used, let's say, a Samsung Galaxy S9 will notice is that there are black bezels on either side of the device. Now, this may be a problem for you if you are considering that all a screen device like the Samsung Galaxy S9. However, know that the S9's display actually curves at the edges all the way into the body, making it, of course, feel like there is an edge to edge display out here. You do have the black borders on either side, something that is easily noticeable. So yeah, that is of course subjective to uh, what you guys like or not. So overall, when it comes to the build and design of this smartphone, it is absolutely really well built. The, uh, the soft feel of the glass at the back is something that is uh, nice, it's unique. And if you are one that is not going to use the phone, uh, with a case, if you are going to use it without a case, then this is something that you will really enjoy playing around with. Another thing to notice is that the power button out here is this really nice bright orange color. On the white one, it is a bright green, and on the black one, it's just black. There is no dual camera setup at the back. Of course, you still have the 12.2 megapixel single camera, which can give you some fantastic portrait images as well. Now, moving on to the user interface, this is running on Android 9 Pie. Out of the box, Google announced that you will get three versions of the operating system. So that means that this phone will be valid for the next three versions of Google's operating system as and when they are made available. So that is fantastic. Another thing that Google has introduced is of course, digital wellness, where you can actually monitor the amount of time that you have spent on each app. So uh, let's say if you are someone that wants to know how much YouTube you've watched in a day on your phone or how much Netflix you've done or how much screen time on you've had. Uh, this is of course to help you not be addicted to your smartphone all the time. You can also set timers and limits for the apps that you use so that you may want to put your phone down after some time. 
you also have the traditional features like squeeze to bring up the Google Assistant, uh, flip it down to uh, mute the phone, so on and so forth. But uh, one of my favorite features, and this is of course something that we have experienced in the OS when it was released as an update for the Pixel and the OnePlus and other devices, is when you press the volume button now, rather than reducing the volume of the ringer, it actually reduces the volume of the media of the phone, and you could just simply tap on the icon to get it to move to either vibrate or absolute silent. It's a really, really small thing, but it is absolutely necessary when those Facebook videos start blaring loudly and you want their volume to reduce rather than the volume of the device. Now, speaking of its absolute raw performance, a lot of you might comment and say, oh, it has only 4 GB of RAM and others are offering 6 and 8 GB of RAM. Well, I've had up to 24 apps open at any given point in time on this device. And because of the memory, some of those apps reset to the beginning of the home screen. However, otherwise navigating between quite a few of them, be it opening WhatsApp, checking out YouTube, opening Facebook, opening Gmail, going back to Creator Studio to check out how these videos are doing, opening a game to play. It all worked absolutely fantastically. And you can just simply swipe up once to bring up the multitasking menu and keep swiping all the way if you want to bring up the entire app drawer. So how limiting is 4 GB of RAM on a device like this is something that only time will tell. But with the limited amount of time that we have spent with this smartphone, it doesn't look like 4 GB really is that limiting. Coming to, of course, one of the most important features of this phone, call quality. Yes, of course, we will get the camera in a minute. But uh, one thing to notice is that the earpiece is actually quite loud. Keep it at about 70% volume, and it is clear enough. However, during a drive in the car, I had put the volume up to 100%, and the person sitting next to me in the back could actually hear a bit of the conversation. So there is some audio leaking, so you may want to be concerned about that. Now coming to the crux of it is the camera. Let's start with the front-facing camera because this time around we have a dual camera set up at the front which are two 8 megapixel cameras. One is of course as a wide angle camera and the other is a telephoto camera and you can just simply swipe to zoom in or zoom out and it actually does give you a nice wider field of view. So let's say if a few of your friends are huddling, you don't have to stretch your arm out all the way. You could actually be a little close and with these image samples that you are seeing right now on your display, you can actually see that you do get a wider field of view which is really, really nice. Their performance is pretty good during daylight. We sat at a Starbucks and clicked a few photos. We sat at home and clicked a few photos. We clicked a few photos in the night as well, in the car as well. And they turned out to be really, really good from things like uh, bokeh effects to even just the normal pictures. Now, coming to the rear camera, uh, its performance is as good, if not better, or even better than last year's Pixels. We still have to uh, get through a nice detailed comparison to tell you which of the flagship cameras is better, be it Samsung's Galaxy family of devices, last year's Pixels, the new iPhones, and any other camera that would like to compete in this department. However, as a standalone camera, uh, the Pixel 3 the Pixel 3 smartphone camera is almost pixel perfect. Uh, what I mean by this is, first of all, the shutter response is almost instantaneous. You just tap and it clicks the photo. It, it's, in, it's insane how fast this camera is when it comes to focusing and clicking a photo. Even when someone was smoking and by the time they blew the smoke out of their mouth, I had the picture instantly. Before a bird could take off from in front of me, I had the picture instantly. You guys can probably see these pictures in front of you right now. What is another amazing thing is the amount of zoom. Now to just represent the zoom, there is one particular picture that I'd like to show you is I live on the 12th floor of a building and I clicked a picture of the cars parked downstairs from the normal uh, field of view and then I zoomed in absolutely and it zoomed in up to three cars and as you can see, the quality of the picture of these three cars is also pretty good. You have another feature called as Stop Shot. So what this essentially does is it'll capture a few moments before and a few moments after the picture that you've actually clicked. Now this worked in two ways for me. When I clicked a picture in absolute darkness, you can see that I do have a few options to choose from. However, when I clicked a picture with my eyes closed, I did not get an option with my eyes open. So yeah, maybe this still needs a little bit of uh, fixing. There is of course another feature called Night Shift which is not yet available to us and that will be available in the due course of time. If you are looking for a flagship smartphone with a fantastic camera that is your priority then you can definitely consider this one. So speaking about the battery of this device, it can last you for a day of use. Now, I am not a very heavy user. I keep the brightness below the recommended mark. I also do not watch a lot of videos or do not engage in my phone that much throughout the day. However, for the purpose of this review, I actually did. I kept the brightness slightly brighter so I could check out the display. I watched a lot of YouTube, a lot of Netflix, made a couple of calls, some social networking, replied to emails from the phone purposely. And when I started out in the morning at about 100% battery at 10 o'clock in the morning, I was left with about 20% battery at about 8 o'clock at at night with a little less than six hours of on-screen time. So that is actually pretty decent in my case. However, if you are a power user, I know a lot of people who keep the brightness really, really bright 
a lot of people do not put the display to go off after a minute on its own so yeah in those conditions you will face some battery drain throughout the day so there you have it guys that was our review of the google pixel 3 smartphone if you are looking for a flagship smartphone then essentially you're going to choose between the flagship offerings from nokia from the samsung galaxy family of devices there are of course uh, the pixels and of course the iphones now this phone brings with it a fantastic camera setup a very very nice uh, build and a design when it comes to a flagship small screen smartphone it's really ergonomic for single-handed use as well and it does not have that god awful ugly notch so yeah, if you are planning to upgrade from, let's say, the first generation Pixel or if you have a flagship device that is more than two years old, then you can definitely consider upgrading to the Pixel 3 smartphone. You will not be disappointed. However, if you have the Pixel 2 or the Pixel 2 XL or any flagship device you bought last year, you can skip this generation because the design is still the same even with uh, the fancy improvements. But you aren't going to get that big a bang for your buck if you're upgrading from something, let's say, you bought last year. So there you have it, guys. That was our review of the Google Pixel 3 smartphone. We have a review of the Pixel 3 XL as well on the website, but we will have that video up for you shortly. If there's anything specific you would like to know about these smartphones, you can let us know in the comment section below. We will do our best to bring you those features in an upcoming video. And until then, for more videos like this one, you can subscribe to our channel. We will catch you in another video. It's goodbye for now.